Hey, welcome to the latest edition of Table Talk. If you're new with us, my name is Jason. So good to be with you. This follows the sermon from Sunday, May the 22nd. And again, if you're new with us, you may be wondering what is Table Talk. Very simply, it's an opportunity to go along with our discussion guide to take the sermon from Sunday and to be able to go a little bit deeper, to ask some of the hard questions, to wrestle with some things that maybe we can't do in that worship moment. And by the way, this is being recorded in our downstairs worship area where on Sundays at 11 a.m. we have in-person worship experiences. They are also live streamed, but here's what we love about Table Talk. And by the way, this is fairly new for us to do these things, but, but Table Talk values what happens in this room but it also values what can happen in your room right where you are, whether that's a coffee shop, whether that's your living room or a back porch or whatever room. Table Talk honors where you are, and here's some of the ingredients to make it really worth your while. To get the most out of it, I've already mentioned the discussion guide. So you go to our website, fbcfo.org, and you can watch the full sermon from Sunday. Uh, you can also, again, access Table Talk, which you've probably already done, of course. And then also, this PDF is a discussion guide that takes the, the heartbeat of that sermon and allows us to go even deeper. But some other ingredients, very quickly, of course, be great if you have your copy of God's Word. Uh, I didn't mention this, but today we're in Exodus 3 because of what Pastor Patrick preached uh, this past Sunday out of Exodus 3. So if you have your copy of God's Word, go ahead and be turning to Exodus 3. Uh, what are some other ingredients? Well, I have a little bit of coffee here or some bottled water, whatever is good for you. But don't miss this ingredient. And that would be this, relationships. Have some people around you. Here's one of the cool opportunities about Table Talk is that it's not something that you just want to do on your own. I mean, you can do these things on your own, but imagine that your living room becomes a place for discussion, that even you and, and, and even me, we, we can become uh, encouragers and disciple makers of other people, and so even if you say, well, I don't feel like that I am a teacher or qualified, well, probably you are more than you think, but Table Talk helps to equip you to do some of those things to influence and help raise up the people around you, whether it's your family or neighbors or friends, we would encourage you to at least begin to pray about the people you can invite around you for these moments. Now today, I've mentioned Exodus 3. Uh, Patrick, our associate pastor of students and evangelism, preached this past Sunday. Now normally he would be with us, but he's a little under the weather. I think he poured so much into the message on Sunday that he needed to take a few days of R&R &R after that. And so here we are. Uh, you've got me today. Again, I, I'm glad to be with you. We're going to patch him in in just a moment. But just to set up a couple of things here in Exodus 3. Uh, Exodus 3, you, you'll see that, that Moses was, was working as a shepherd, and he didn't even own his own sheep. He was shepherding the sheep of his father-in-law, and he had taken them down into an area called Median. And Midian, if you look on a map, if you just go to the back of your Bible and look on a map, was, was way down south and east on the other side of the Red Sea, just what I would call in the middle of nowhere, that Moses had been shepherding these sheep who were not of his own. And it's interesting that Moses had been doing this for 40 years. Just imagine 40 years of your life. For many of us, that is half a lifetime in our day and age. Moses had been doing this. But we read here, and you're going to read it in just a few minutes, where he did something a little out of the routine. He took the sheep back around the Red Sea and then west, further west, over to the mountain of God, the mountain of Horeb or the mountain of Sinai. Now, you'll be thinking about some of the significance of we really don't know why Moses did that, but how God worked in that, just something out of the routine. But here's how I want to set this up, is thinking about life in the ordinary. For 40 years, Moses shepherding sheep. If you know much about shepherding, that meant being out with the sheep, sleeping with them, taking rotations, watching over them. Not the most glamorous of jobs, right? I mean, certainly most of us have no idea what it would mean to be on this permanent 40-year camp out, out with the sheep. That was Moses. He went from the glamour and the royalty of Egypt to being out in the middle of nowhere shepherding sheep that 
were not his own. So talk about the humility. Talk about how his world had become so small that he wasn't really interacting with anyone else, just him, maybe a few other shepherds and the sheep out away from everyone and just there in that desert life. So how would God speak into that? Think about how God speaks into the routines of your life because let's be honest, sometimes our worlds get really, really small. I mean, think about it. We go to the same store, same restaurants, the same jobs perhaps. I bet you drive wherever you're going, you go the same way every day to and from that, that our worlds sometimes get really small. Like if I said, think about how you could invite to be with you in your living room for these table talk moments, you would say, I really don't know, because maybe everybody you know is already in church or connected to a church, and you really don't know how to extend beyond those normal boundaries of your relationships. Well, that's Moses. Moses was out here isolated by himself. You think about how small his world had become, but yet God spoke into it in a very powerful way as you're about to read. God spoke. Let me ask you this. What would it take for God to get your attention to speak into your life, for you to be able to recognize his voice. And and here's one of the big truths from this message from Sunday, is that God has a purpose for you. He has a calling for your life, but we have to position ourselves to not only have a relationship with God through personal faith in Christ, but we've got to be listening. We have to be sensitive and discerning of, of what God is saying. And sometimes our worlds get so small, and maybe we get so busy and focused in the myopic moments of our lives that we miss some of those bigger opportunities. So let's set it up this way. We're going to patch in. Patrick's going to be with us with the beauty of technology. Here is Pastor Patrick reading from Sunday, setting up the message, reading this scripture for you, and then I'll pray for you on the other side. So we're going to talk about today, let's have a little break from the book of Genesis and uh, bump to Exodus and look at experiencing God's calling on our lives from Exodus 3, 1 through 17. We're going to see how God called Moses and how he's still calling people today to himself and to greater purposes. And I think we're going to be able to look at this story um, from the west side of the mountain of Horeb, the mountain of God of where God speaks into Moses' life. We're going to see how he's going to speak into our lives and how he's still wanting to speak and still speaking today to our lives. So Exodus 3, 1 through 17 starts like this, and it says, Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame, a fire out of the midst of a bush. How cool. He looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. Why is the bush not burned? When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I've surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of the taskmasters. I know their sufferings. And I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a land good and broad, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me and I've seen the oppression in which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, but I will be with you and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And thus I'm to be remembered throughout all generations. 
Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob has appeared to me, saying that I have observed you and what has been done to you in Egypt, and that I promise I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. All right, so you've read the scripture. Patrick has led you in what we're taking in here from head to toe from Exodus chapter three. Now it's your opportunity to take your discussion guide and just as you read back through that text of Exodus chapter three, beginning in verse one, my challenge is is to take each one of these these questions and really wrestle with them and, and work with them, especially if you have people around you that you can dialogue with. And if you ever have questions, listen, we are here for you to encourage, to challenge, to equip, to come alongside. Just consider us a resource as you go deeper in God's word and also as you encourage people around you. I'm gonna pray for you and then it's all yours for the fun of your discussion. Father, thank you for moments like this where we very simply can say yes to whatever you have for us. And I pray, Lord, as we think about what did it take for that ground out there in the middle of the desert to become holy? What did it take for that? What did it take to get Moses' attention? Because out there in the dryness of the desert, he had probably seen uh, bushes and objects catch on fire. He had probably seen things of a similar nature, but not like this. Not where there was a bush that was on fire, but it would not be consumed. It would not be burnt up. This miracle of God and how that bush, in a really unusual sense, becomes a temple for the Spirit of God. What an awesome thing to see God's presence there grabbing Moses' attention. And once he had Moses' attention, and he knew it, because Moses looked and turned aside and was focused, that's when God began to speak. So, Father, we pray, speak to our hearts now through your word, through our time together. I pray you bless it. All of these things with my friends here in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, that's all for now. We'll be back with you again next week. Come worship with us in person or online this Sunday at 11 a.m., and Table Talk will follow. Until we spend that time once again with you, God bless you.